Live from the Wynn Resort in Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering .next Conference 2016. Brought to you by Nutanix. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. We're back, Laura Padilla is here. She's the Senior Director of Alliances at Nutanix. Laura, welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me, I'm excited to be here, first time. The first women in tech guest this week. Really? Uh -oh. I am honored uh -oh. and saddened yeah. as well. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. The penultimate guest, well thank you very much for, for being here. Mm -hmm. um, so the ecosystem, it's burgeoning mm -hmm. around us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got to feel good about that, a lot of momentum. Yeah, so we started our first Elevate Technology Alliance program last year, at last.next, with um, about 10 partners signed up, and we're now at over 50 partners who have signed up to our ecosystem. And we're really excited this year because this year is going to be another um, revision to our program. We're talking a lot more about the platform story with partners, just like as you've been hearing Sunil and Diraj and everyone talk about how platform is really important to the Nutanix story overall. Our partners are now going to move from working with us and in interoperability story to working in us and really writing to those APIs and helping us build that platform. What, what makes a platform a platform? Well, I think what it is is really what, what, I, what I just mentioned. So before partners would kind of run in a VM on us um, and really just interoperate with us without really truly integration, what you're going to see now is partners being able to, we're going to open up our platform and some APIs around networking and security and PRISM. So partners can now feed data and information into Nutanix to be able to visualize that more, do visualization, do orchestration, and now customers are going to be able to really look at us as a platform for all these other technologies such as Commvault, who's written to our APIs for backup, right? And now have integrated with our snapshots and also at the hypervisor layer as well. Um, Citrix, we know we talked about our Citrix integration with, um, with uh, Zen Apps and Desktop and MCS as well as the Acropolis hypervisor those all are engineering level integrations um, that are going to help customers really be able to roll out solutions in a much more seamless manner on Nutanix. Can you talk about the evolution of the partnership, uh, ethos, the programs? I'm sure in the early days there was a lot of push. Hey, we got to go get some partners, get people to write to our platform. Yeah. As you guys you know, ascend into the stratosphere, you probably get a lot more inbound. Mm -hmm. What's the balance? Yep. Yep. How are you adjudicating there? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I think we're all still trying to figure it out and find what the best ways to balance all the partners. We do get tons of requests, which is great. Um, what we're trying to do is really figure out from customers, what are the use cases that they want to see on Nutanix? Where are the product gaps that our partners are helping to fill on our platform? Um, so reaching out both uh, to partners who help us address some of those concerns from customers, um, as well as um, those different product areas that we think we need to fill, that we need to partner versus build today. So some examples of that are vArmor, like you talked to vArmor and Illumio, um, who help with the micro-segmentation and security story. Um, I talked about Commvault with backup. Um, you know, you're going to see also with our, um, with our Asterix release, which Raja talked about in our keynote, um, much more opening up of different frameworks and APIs around networking. So you're going to be able to see some of our partners like Brocade um, and Juniper, um, Arista, some of our networking partners being able to do more visualization and feed more information into Prism. So again, we're prioritizing partners who are doing more of that engineering level work and working with us to really build that platform story versus just interoperability. When you talk about that, that mix of the partners in the ecosystem, mm -hmm. uh, I'm curious how many partners are coming to you because Nutanix is something different and mm -hmm. therefore the customers that are looking for some, some modern infrastructure mm -hmm. are open to something, something new. I mean, ha many of the partners you talk about are, are startups themselves. Right, right. So, can you repeat your question? So, so, you know, how many of the partners are coming to you because there's customers that are willing to try something different yep. versus, yep. you know, just the, 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 the typical, you know, vendors that are just trying to say, okay, I, I just want to increase my market share. Yeah, so actually the former is most of the case, right? So we have everything from companies like F5 who have been around for a really long time, a really strong install base saying that they want to modernize um, and move more from legacy three-tier SAN 
um, and support their customers into modernizing their data center. So we get a lot of partners who want to do that and come to us just because they see a trend and their customers are moving that way so they need to align with that. That's probably um, what we see most of versus just companies coming to us just for no other reason. Okay, so can, can, you, can you unpack for us a little bit the, the, the Elevate program itself? You know, sure. what, what does the partner get? What yeah. do they have to put into it? Absolutely, so, um, so what we have is a program with three different levels. Uh, the new program, um, every, it's really open to anyone to, end, from an entry level point of view, can join the program, very low barrier to entry. Again, um, they'll just have to do some interoperability testing. We have a program called Nutanix Ready. They'll do some testing on there. If they interoperate and they have at least one joint customer a year, do the testing, then um, they can stay in the program. Now, if they actually want to graduate and up the program, they're going to have to support the Acropolis hypervisor and they're going to also have to support um, right to our APIs, and these will also be Nutanix ready, but they'll get different designations. So Acropolis or AHV designation, as well as an integrated designation with tags. Um, they'll have to do an appropriate test kit um, and some development work to be able to get those tags within the Nutanix ready program and then also be able to have at least three to five referenceable customers um, invest in marketing funding with us, um, and um, as well as do some training as well if they actually want to move on up in the program. Right. Now, as a reward for that work, um, we're spending a whole bunch of time on um, supporting partners now on go-to-market. Um, so how do they engage with our channel? Um, how are they able to build joint programs together and roll that out um, once they have a solution? Um, sales kits, marketing plans, marketing programs, field marketing, um, us spending time on annual business plans with them, measuring that in regards to ROI, executive sponsorship. Um, so once they do that work, um, we'll reward them with much more of our time and hopefully ROI in the business. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure I've seen a bunch of Nutanix ready pins around yep. the conference Absolutely. here. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, how much training, certification, things, you know, what, what's going on at the show uh, for the partners? Yeah, so um, earlier this week, um, there was a boot camp for people who wanted to actually do um, MPX training, more, um, more technical training. Um, at the show this year, we're doing an Alliance Summit actually right now from one to five. That's really showing partners how they can engage more with us um, from go to market to support to technical and helping them start um, really outlining out that business plan. Um, there's tons of opportunities uh, we've built for partners to be able to meet with us, to sponsor the show and meet our customers. Um, so tons of different areas for involvement. So how do you measure success? Is it mm -hmm. number of partners, productivity of the par mm -hmm. partners? Yeah, yeah. You know, the subjective, objective terms? Yeah, so um, a few things. One is um, partners who integrate with Acropolis Hypervisor AHV and integrated, we're measuring that as a milestone mm -hmm. um, this year. Um, also, it is a return from pipeline um, in different marketing activities such as demand gen programs, as well as uh, close business together. And the yeah. partner, how would you characterize the partner? So you mentioned, you know, like for instance, Commvault and Backup, mm -hmm. um, Rubrik, you see, you see mm -hmm. those guys here integrating. Mm -hmm. um, what other types of partners? Is it all technology partners in the technology yes, Elevate Elevate technology? It's pure technology yes, partners, correct? Yes, I just run the technology alliance. Okay, so no yeah. channel partners are in there, no, is that right? No, we or? work with them on the go-to-market piece, but right. the program's for technology And partners. is there a line between sort of pure technology, sometimes integrators look like technology mm -hmm, guys, mm -hmm. are you guys pretty strict about that? Or Yeah, I mean, right. I would say the definition is a company that has their own product, that they sell in market could be a technology alliance partner versus a partner like an SI that would integrate uh, products together and that roll that out. Do you quantify how many you have at this point? Or how many technology do you partners? Share that? Yeah. yeah, I think we have like 50, 53. Partners. 53? Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's probably growing like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, absolutely. Do you set you know, targets? I mean, you don't have to share them with us, but is you, or, no. or no, is it more just the productivity of those partnerships? Exactly, yeah, we don't necessarily set targets. I, I mean, if we have 50 amazing partners, I'm happy with that. I don't need to have 100. I think, again, we're really aligning that what we think makes the most sense to our business. It's going to help our customers um, use us more as a platform and be stickier from a use case point of view. And predominantly U.S. partners, I presume, or? No, it's global, and we have, we have partners like Kapersky, that's a Russian security company, you know, to, to U.S. partners, so. Great, yeah. so um, what's next? I mean, what should we be looking for out of um, the program? No, I think just the thing that I touched on already, you know, really aligning much more with the platform story. Um, how, do we differ how do we use our partners to differentiate us from some of our competitors? 
And how do we also help uh, use our, our partners to add more value to our product and our platform? Yeah. And so I think you're going to see much more of those use cases and customer stories. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. so I'm, I'm curious, you have AHV in there for kind of that, that higher level. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, most of those partners you mentioned, they're also doing VMware, you, Microsoft's also a partner of yep. yours. Uh -huh. uh, I, I know like on the NPX certification, you've got to do two uh, mm -hmm. environments. So how do you balance that, you know, kind of competitive differentiation uh, versus, you know, the, the, that company's business? Yeah, I mean, for us, we see AHV as um, you know, an important piece of our platform story, you know, allowing our customers to be able to really you know, open, um, really that open infrastructure. I mean, we moved from you know, uh, making storage invisible to you know, compute invisible and, and then the hyper-converged story to now, which is really kind of the enterprise cloud and thinking about being able to open our customers up and, um, and be able to really use this more as a platform. And so, um, and so um, we would encourage our, our partners to also think of um, AHV as another um, industry leading hypervisor that we think adoption will grow fast enough um, that they would spend time writing to that and integrating to it just like they would ESX or Hyper-V. Now from a customer point of view too, um, you know, that gives also customers choice, right? If they want to be able to use Nutanix with any of those hypervisors, they're able to do that now, so our partners should support that story. What are you hearing at the event? I mean, what are they ask? What are the partners asking you for? And what are the conversations like? I mean, I think uh, one thing our partners constantly ask for is more engagement with us and with our customers. So I think the show really lets them do that, right? Um, they've had some really great customer conversations. They've got to meet with our executives. Um, they've got to meet with all of us and really start working out plans for next year and the future. Um, and so I think those are the main things that, that we are hoping the show gave them. And how about things like joint engineering? How, how does that mm -hmm. decision get made as to whether or not that actually should be done? Can be done. Um, yeah, I mean, we get those requests all the time. So I think it just all comes back to use case um, and market opportunity. You know, if we think that there's a huge market opportunity for a specific use case and customers are going to demand it, then we'll work with a partner to build that engineering level. So what happens? So a partner engineer. will come to you and say, hey, I got this great idea. We integrate mm -hmm. this huge yeah. market. It's huge. It's going to be unbelievable. Yeah. And say, okay, great. Let's put pen to paper and do mm -hmm. a business case. Mm -hmm. and. Yep. We'll vet it exactly. and test that's, it. And that's what we'll do, yeah. you guys agree and you'll either shoot it down or say, wow, this is great, let's go. Yep. And then at that point, you'll at, both sides will allocate engineering resources and yeah, make absolutely. a plan. Absolutely, yeah, if we think the business case makes sense, we will. Is yeah. it common to do that or is it more um, I wouldn't one say way? it's common. Yeah. Um, it's common to get the requests, um, but it does right. take a while to vet them out, and, um, but we don't, we don't do that with everyone just because of bandwidth, so we have to prioritize. Right, but something like, you know, I think I think I heard joint engineering with Microsoft, for example. So with Microsoft with is a great reasons. example. So Microsoft, we launched our CPS product together. There's obviously engineering level in, um, engagement there. Commvault, engineering level engagement. Um, again, because they support Acropolis Hypervisor, they're the first backup partner to support Acropolis AHV. So why that was really important. Um, and so, um, and then Citrix, again, I mean, VDI is still a huge use case for us as a company, and again, they're uh, supporting AHV again. Um, there was engineering level engagement there as well. So in the Commvault integration, that says they're really the, the only backup company now that can, can back up all platforms. All uh, hypervisors, uh-huh. Uh, that, that are utilizing uh, new, uh, Nutanix exactly. infrastructure. Exactly, right. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's interesting. Yeah. All right. So mm -hmm. time to market. You're going to get a flood of other people doing that now, which is great. Oh, and, yeah. and we are, which is great. Yeah. yeah so you get a lot of inbound increase. <laughs> right. <Yeah>. All right. <laughs> Excellent. All right, Laura. Well, listen. Thanks very much for coming to the cube. I know you got to run, but uh, appreciate your time. Great. Thank you guys so much. This All was right. Fun. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Thanks. Keep it right there, everybody. Stu and I will be back with our last guest, and then to wrap before the big keynotes that we actually I was just forming. We are not broadcasting because there's some super secret stuff going on with Magic. But keep it right there. We'll be back right after this word. Thank <laughs> you.